What if I told you that some of Colombo's most iconic landmarks, the National Library, the Police Headquarters and the National Archives were designed under the guidance of a woman who overcame every obstacle to become a true pioneer? The first woman in Sri Lanka to call herself an engineer, the first female civil engineer and the first to lead as the nation's chief structural engineer. She was brave, determined and deeply loyal to her country. A Tamil lady from Jaffna who not only broke barriers but remained a devoted child of Mother Lanka. In today's video, we'll be exploring the remarkable and inspiring story of Dr. Premala Sivaprakasa Pillai Sivasekaram who became Sri Lanka's first female engineer at a time when even the Dean of the University of Ceylon tried to discourage women from pursuing engineering. Premala Sivaprakasa Pillai Sivasekaram was born on the 22nd of April 1942 in Jaffna Fort, in the quarters of her maternal granduncle, just days after the Japanese bombing of Colombo Port forced her family to temporarily relocate. From the very beginning, her life was intertwined with resilience and determination. Her father, Thambia Pillai Sivaprakasa Pillai, worked as an engineer at Colombo Port, and both of her brothers would later become engineers as well. Even her mother had technical drawing skills, assisting her father in designing the family home. Little Premala and her siblings often played with Meccano sets, sparking her fascination with structures and design from a very young age. Beyond academics, Premala showed extraordinary talent in music and dance. She began performing at the age of three and her skill and grace earned her a place in most year-end school events. This early exposure to performance cultivated her confidence and poise, qualities that would later help her navigate male-dominated fields. She attended CMS Ladies College Colombo, one of Sri Lanka's oldest and most prestigious Christian missionary schools. There, she excelled academically and displayed a particular aptitude for mathematics and science. Remarkably, she was one of only two girls in her batch to pursue the mathematics stream, setting herself apart in an era when very few girls ventured into such subjects. Her school years were a perfect blend of creativity, discipline and intellectual curiosity, qualities that laid the foundation for her groundbreaking career. In 1960, Premala entered the engineering faculty of the University of Ceylon, a bold move in a time when engineering was considered a male domain. She faced resistance even from within the university. The dean reportedly asked her father, who was a faculty member, to discourage her from pursuing engineering. But her parents stood firmly by her side, supporting her ambition and determination. By 1964, Premala shattered all barriers, graduating as Sri Lanka's first female engineer and specifically the first female civil engineer. She was immediately appointed as an instructor at the faculty, inspiring her peers and mentoring the next generation of engineers. Her family's support continued to be unwavering. They even encouraged her to focus on her education before even considering marriage. In 1965, Premala earned a government scholarship to pursue her doctorate in structural engineering at Somerville College, Oxford. Oxford in the 1960s was a hub of intellectual energy and innovation, and Premala quickly immersed herself in both academic and international professional networks. She represented Oxford at the International Conference of Women Engineers and Scientists in 1967, becoming one of only nine international women technologists to receive the prestigious Caroline Haslett Memorial Fund Bursary. In 1966, she joined the British Women's Engineering Society and later participated in the Women in Engineering Year in 1969, showcasing the capabilities of women engineers worldwide. During this period, she married Sivasegaram, a fellow Sri Lankan scholar pursuing a PhD at Imperial College, London. They welcomed the son before returning to Sri Lanka in 1970, ready to contribute to their country's development. Returning to Sri Lanka brought its own challenges. Government regulations required scholarship recipients to serve five years of public service. Premala had just given birth and hoped to spend more time with her child, but delays would have incurred fines far exceeding her monthly salary. Balancing motherhood with work, she began her professional duties at the Kennedy Peasantry Commission, 
demonstrating resilience and commitment. Even as the country's first female engineer, Premla faced the dual pressures of pioneering a male-dominated field while fulfilling her responsibilities as a mother, a balance she navigated with determination and grace. By 1978, Premla reached a historic milestone. She was appointed Sri Lanka's first female chief structural engineer, heading the designs office in Colombo. This was a transformative period in Sri Lanka, coinciding with President J. R. Jawardhana's open economic policies and rapid modernization. Premala led major projects, overseeing the design and construction of Colombo's National Library, the police headquarters, and the National Archives, buildings that remain integral to the country's cultural and administrative identity. Her work was pioneering not just in scale, but in perspective. She emphasized the inclusion of women's viewpoints in engineering and urban planning, recognizing that women's daily experiences from transportation to healthcare offered insights critical to designing inclusive infrastructure. During periods of civil unrest, Premala and her family pursued professional opportunities abroad. She worked in Barbados as a consultant for the Commonwealth Fund for Technical Cooperation and later in London, contributing to projects for the Property Services Agency and Camden Council, all while her husband continued his research at Imperial College. Despite the distance, her loyalty to Sri Lanka never wavered. In 1997, once stability returned and her son had completed his education, Premala returned home to contribute to her country. She joined the Faculty of Engineering Technology at the Open University of Sri Lanka, dedicating herself to teaching, mentoring, and inspiring new generations of engineers. Premala's achievements earned her widespread recognition. In 2015, she received the Excellence in Engineering Award from the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. In 2019, Parliament recognized her as one of 12 female changemakers in Sri Lanka, coinciding with International Women's Day. She also contributed to the intellectual development of her field, editing the Engineer Journal from 1977 to 1980, becoming an Honorary Fellow of the Society of Structural Engineers of Sri Lanka in year 2000, and authoring A History of Engineering in Sri Lanka, a brief overview in the year 2006. Think about it. She was born in wartime Ceylon, performed music and dance from the age of three, excelled academically at CMS Ladies College, pursued mathematics when few girls dared, and rose to become the first female engineer, the first female civil engineer, and the first female chief structural engineer of Sri Lanka. She designed iconic buildings, taught, wrote, and mentored, yet always remained loyal to her country. A true child of Mother Lanka. Dr. Premala Sivaprakasa Pillai Sivasekaram wasn't just a trailblazer. She was a symbol of courage, perseverance, and vision, proving that barriers are meant to be broken. So the next time you walk past Colombo's National Library, Police Headquarters, or National Archives, remember they stand tall because a woman once imagined them and engineered them into reality. If you've enjoyed this story, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe. For questions, you can always reach me at tuanzamirwrites at gmail.com. Please don't forget to check out the description box below for image credits, sources, and recommended readings. Until next time, this is me, Zamir Karim, signing off. Uncovering history, one story at a time. Take care and God bless you all.